Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to look at increasing and decreasing functions. So just uh, we'll start with the definition of the two. So a function f at x is said to be increasing on the interval i if um, f at x1 minus f at x, or is less than f at x2 whenever x1 is less than x2 in the interval. So just to kind of, that sounds maybe more confusing than it needs to. So this would be a picture of a function which is increasing. So all it's saying is that if x1 is less than x2, so x1 less than x2, so all that really means is you move from left to right, f at x1 is less than f at x2, which just means, um, like this is the y value, so it just means the y value for the second point, the one on the right, is bigger than the one on the left. So it just means, all this really is saying is as you go up from left, or as you go from left to right, the function is going up, or the y values are going up. And that's all this is saying. So for any points um, in a function, in an interval for a function, where this is true, where it's going up from left to right, that's called an interval of increase. Uh, for interval of decrease, it's just the opposite. So um, notice all we did, the only definition, or difference in the definition is this sign is different. So that means uh, f at x1 is bigger than f at x2, which just means you're going down um, still as you go from left to right. Okay, so that's the definition. All it really means, it's, this is the mathematical definition, but I would just think of it as saying, as you go from left to right, if the y values are going up, it's increasing. As you go from left to right, as the y values are going down, you're decreasing. So let's look at a couple examples. Um, so the first one will be uh, just a, a parabola. So uh, determine the intervals of an increase and decrease for each function. So here we have a, a, a quadratic function, just your parent function, x squared. So this function is increasing uh, when it's going up, when the y values are going up. So that would be, there's two ways to write this. You could write this in, uh, usually we'll write it in interval notation. Um, so starting at zero, and so the x value of zero, and everything to the right, uh, the y values are increasing. So from zero to infinity. So infinity uh, gets a, a round bracket. And for the interval of increase, you're actually going to include zero. And the reason you include zero is if you go back to the definition, sometimes people aren't sure if zero should be included. But if you go to the definition, and, and we looked at what it says, it says if x1 is less than x2, um, f at x1 is less than f at x2. So for, for this point, zero, zero, all the points to the right are have larger y values. So zero would be part of that interval where that statement is true. So that's your interval of increase. Um, or you could write it in set notation. So all x element of real numbers such that x is bigger than or equal to zero. But usually we'll write it in interval notation. For the rest of the examples, I'll just do interval notation. The interval of decrease, so where is it going down? Where are the y values going down? Well, that's just on the other side of the problem. Um, so this would be from minus infinity to zero. And again, you're actually going to include zero in this interval for the same sort of reasoning. Um, remember this definition for interval of decrease. If um, this point x2 was zero, zero, then all the points to the left have larger y values. So zero would be included in the i, in the interval i. Um, now, one thing to notice here, so note zero, zero, or actually let's just say x equals zero, is in both intervals. And um, that can sometimes throw people because they're thinking, how can a function be both increasing and decreasing at this point? And the answer is, it's not increasing or decreasing at that point. It's not increasing or decreasing at any point. It's just increasing or decreasing over an interval. And this point just happens to be in both intervals. Um, now still, sometimes uh, you know people object to that. Or, or it, it's just confusing. So one thing we'll often do, and you'll, s you'll see the questions that I ask you um, in, in the problems, I do this rather than you know worrying about this point zero because to be all in all honesty, it doesn't really matter if you're including it or not. The questions will often specify, um, determine the the open intervals of increase. So like it might specify that it has to be an open interval, meaning 
no square brackets. So we would just, in that case, write 0 infinity, and in this case, minus infinity to 0, uh, not including 0. And that way you don't have to worry about 0 being in both intervals. Um, but you know, by the definition, uh, it, 0 would actually be in both, both intervals. OK, so the, uh, the second example uh, is a cubic function. So in this case, uh, notice the y values as you go from left to right are always increasing. So the interval of increase is actually everything. So it's increasing as you go from left to right for all x values. So the interval of decrease uh, is there isn't one. It's never, the y values never are going down. So um, all, all real numbers for minus infinity to infinity. Uh, the square root function. So here's one again where the y values are always increasing. So it never decreases. And uh, in this case, it would be increasing on its entire domain, including 0. Uh, but again, this is one like if we want to make that specification that it has to be open, then we wouldn't include 0. Although in this example, if you were to look at it, it seems like you should include 0 because it's not part of two different domains or it's not part of an interval of decrease or anything um, and it's clearly it's going up uh, on this whole interval right 0 0 anything to the right of 0 anything if x is ever bigger than 0 the y value is bigger so 0 should be included but if we did make that specification that we were only looking at open intervals then we would have to uh, discount 0 0 and the last one is a reciprocal function. So in this one, the y values are always going down, or at least there's two pieces, I should say. So on this piece, the y values are always going down. Okay? So from minus infinity to 0, the y values are going down as you go from left to right. At x equals 0, the function's undefined. So if, if the function's undefined at a point, that point can't be in the interval of increase or decrease. Um, but then there's actually a second interval where it's also still decreasing. Notice that the y values of this piece are bigger than this piece, but I'm looking at them in, as two separate intervals, so that's OK. Um, so from 0 to infinity. Um, so on this interval, and then on this interval, the function is decreasing. This symbol here means union, which you means uh, uh, take the take the intervals together so they're both count as intervals of uh, decrease but but separate so what the what it means is or so it's this interval it's decreasing or this interval it's decreasing uh, but you not and so you can't combine the intervals